So the idea we introduced in the last video is that economies can operate efficiently or inefficiently. And if they're operating inefficiently, that means it's possible to produce more output without any sacrifices, so not facing any trade-offs. And actually, that's the that's the big a big chunk of this course is about explaining in what situations an economy operates efficiently and in what situations it's operating inefficiently and when it's operating inefficiently there are sort of free lunches out there to be had if you just make changes uh, to how you organize stuff you can have more of everything you don't have to make any sacrifices and so we introduced this simple example in the last video where you know if you allocate no labor to producing one good and all the capital to producing it instead that's inefficient you can improve on that by just moving one worker over and some capital over to offset the loss of that worker we're going to be more precise and make an argument and sort of set up an argument for the exact conditions when an economy is operating efficiently in this and the next video and to do that we're going to use our isoquants and we're going to create a new kind of chart called an Edgeworth box okay so we're going to continue to assume that we've got s our production of shelter is given by this production function and our production of food is given by this production function and Let's draw two diagrams about how we're going to use our resources. Okay. So this is our diagram about how we use capital and labor to produce shelter. Notice I've got a little KS for shelter. And this is our diagram our, for how we're using our capital and labor to make food. Okay. And let's uh, stick with the assumptions that we had at the end of the last video, where the amount of shelter, or sorry, the amount of capital that was used to produce shelter was 1, and the amount of labor was 99, and vice versa over here. KF was equal to 49, and LF was equal to 1. Okay, so we can draw those points on this graph here. Okay, KS is equal to 1, so it's going to be something like here, and LS is equal to 99. We'll say it's right there. And this is 100, for example, and this will be 50. Over here, we're using almost all the capital to produce uh, food, so we're at 49, and we're using one laborer, so we're somewhere like this. And we'll try to eyeball it there. Okay. So these dots tell us how this economy is using its resources. Now we can add on to these isoquants to figure out how that you know, translates into outputs. Okay, So remember, an isoquant is all combinations of capital and labor that generate uh, the same amount of output. Now in this case, capital is, uh, I can draw, because this is a perfect substitute, capital is a perfect substitute for labor, the isoquants are going to be straight lines and they're going to turn out to be like kind of shallow straight lines and that's because for every one unit of capital I need twice as much labor to produce the same output so I want to draw one that goes through that point it's my best shot at it and we can draw there are more out here okay okay let's I'm gonna try and draw them you'll see We'll see why later, so that they stay in this sort of box. So what's this isoquant equal to that this allocation is on? Well, we can plug these values in. And if we're using one unit of capital and 99 units of labor, this is the isoquant corresponding to 99 units of shelter. OK? Over here, these things look more like this. They're Cobb-Douglas production functions, and so they've got this curve to them. And I'm going to try and draw them again so that they... Let's do this way, yeah. All right. So what am I doing here? I'm drawing the isoquants, and we can see that if we moved... There's an isoquant that we could draw sort of in any point in this space, and we could figure out what that's equal to, how much capital or how much food that generates. Remember, as we go in this direction, we get more 
food. I know you can't see that, it just says more food. And as we go in uh, this direction, we get more shelter because we're allocating more and more capital and labor to producing shelter. Okay, now the reason I drew these isoquants as sort of terminating in white space, like uh, right up here, is because the economy has only actually got, in this example, 50 units of capital and 100 laborers. So anything outside that range is actually not available to them. We could, there are isoquants, so the production technology is still feasible out here. You know, like if you had this much labor, you could in fact produce in these things that these dashed parts of the isoquant, but there's just not that much labor in this economy. And so I've just sort of left them out, okay? On the other hand, anywhere within this shaded box, anywhere in there is at least technically feasible for this economy to achieve. They could, they have enough capital, they have enough labor that if they wanted to make the food associated with that bundle, they could do it. Similarly over here, any amount of capital above 50 is not available and any amount of labor above 100 is just not available, okay? And let's draw one more of these things to fill in this lower space here. Okay, now, We've got all this information in here, and I believe that this isoquant is 89.4 if you're using that much food and um, shelter. But it's kind of hard to interpret this. It's, it's, it's got all the information we need, but it doesn't help us determine if we're using our resources efficiently. To figure that out, we're instead going to merge these two diagrams into one diagram called an Edgeworth box. And to do that, we're gonna take one of the other ones, one of the two diagrams, rotate it, and merge it on top. So let's do that right now. So we take this guy, and we're actually going to rotate him 90 degrees, and then we'll rotate him 90 degrees again. I rotated the wrong way, guys, my bad. All right. Okay, so this diagram has got all the same information, it's just upside down and backwards now, okay? But everything else is the same, it's just how we interpret it. We have to sort of mentally flip our head and think about that. Now, what's interesting is that this diagram tells us on this axis is measuring capital, okay? And because we flipped it around, if we go from here down to here, we're talking about more and more capital allocated from food to food. If we're allocating more and more capital to food, that would indicate we're allocating less and less of it to shelter if we're using all of it. And coincidentally, as you move down here, that tells you you're allocating less and less capital to shelter. And so you can see now these axes are actually telling us information about the other chart. As we move down in uh, on either chart, we're allocating less capital to shelter, okay? What we're gonna do now is stick this guy right on top of the other one. So, let's do it. All right. Best I can, right around there. All right, so if I had drawn these like precisely correct, then everything would snap up together, but my right angles are not really right angles. This is bad, bad professor drawing. It's nothing, don't hold it against the Edgeworth box. Okay, so this new creation is called an Edgeworth box. And it has within it all the information about the economy that you kind of need to make production decisions. This point here is telling us how much capital we're allocating to production of shelter, how much capital we're allocating to the production of uh, food, how much labor we're allocating to one, and how much labor we're allocating to the other. It's a little bit hard to see here because I've because all the names are covering each other up. So let me draw one more Edgeworth box below it 
that will be just sort of a cleaner version of the same thing. So the allocation is right there. Shelter from that corner, food from this one. And we've got straight lines going through it. And then in the other direction, we've got these curved guys like this. And so on, okay? On this vertical axis here, we're measuring capital allocated to shelter. On this vertical axis, we're measuring capital allocated to food. This one goes down, this one goes up. But notice that they have the same height because there's 50 available to each of them, okay? From zero to 50. If we go over here, this is the amount of labor being allocated to producing food, and here's the amount of labor being allocated to shelter. And if we move this allocation from here to say here, well, we could then read off the amount of capital and labor being used to produce food by reading it off these points in the axes. And we could read the amount of labor and food being produced for being used to produce food by looking at these points on this axis measured from those, those ways. Okay. So inside the Edgeworth box is all the economic production possibilities of the economy. We've got all of the um, we've got all of the isoquants, and we've got all of the uh, input combinations that are possible. In the next video, we're going to see how you can use that to figure out if your economy is operating efficiently.